So here's how it all started. Now, I grew up in a very ordinary working class Chinese migrant family that typically struggled with their finances. Now, in fact, we were so frugal that even our fortune cookies were budget friendly. But today I am forever grateful for everything, even though there have been some pretty difficult and well, fortuneless times. Because overall, it's been a net positive. And I would say a major part of that was becoming a UX designer because it actually unlocked more than I could have ever asked for. As you can see today, I want to balance out the conversation because a few weeks ago, I talked about why you shouldn't become a UX designer. Eight reasons why you shouldn't become a UX designer in 2023. So today I wanna to talk about why you should. Now the first one is money is great. If you do it well, the money is great. You see, back in 2004, when I was a teenager obsessed with gaming, this passion led me to build my very own first website. And soon enough, I found myself deep down the rabbit hole selling products online. How deep the rabbit hole goes. To my surprise, at just 17 years old, I made my very first $300,000 with ClickBank and CPA Lead. Now, with that newfound success and the skills I acquired from building websites and making sales, I managed to land my very first job at freelancer.com, earning a pretty cool $70,000 a year. It's not too bad for an 18-year-old. But after a year and a bit, I started to feel like I wasn't really learning anything new. For me, my career has always been about growth and if I don't feel like I'm growing or I'm learning, I just move on. That is when I took a leap and joined High Pages while also consulting with a few other companies on the side. So by the time I was 24, I worked my way up to a $140,000 package. Now feeling confident in my abilities, I decided to venture out into freelancing. In my first year alone, back in 2016, I made over $220,000, which I have talked about in a previous video. As you spend more time, you're gonna increase your rates, 6,000, 5,000, 10,000, and it starts to snowball. But I didn't stop there. Over the next five years, I scaled an agency which generated a life-changing $6 million. Now this financial year, I'm on track to make between 1.5 and $2 million. I cannot speak for everyone, but all I know is that what has worked for me and I can confidently say that if you have the ability to cut through the noise, genuinely deliver value to companies and be able to connect with key decision makers in the industry, the money is great. Everyone's got their own take on what makes work impactful and meaningful. Now for me, it boils down to four key things. My work being used by real people so I can see it changing lives. It's growing, meaning people are genuinely loving it and they're sharing it with their friends. It presents new challenges to keep me from feeling stagnant. And last but not least, it pays me well, really well. When all these needs are met, I am totally fulfilled. And I can't picture myself in any other industry that checks all these boxes. Now, throughout my professional journey, I've been lucky enough to find that my work has genuinely and usually been meaningful. But let's face it, nothing will last forever. So whenever I hit a plateau, there's always a new opportunity in some other sector waiting for me. For example, FinTech, health tech, there's now AI, there are marketplaces, there's ed tech. UX design taps into practically every sector in the world. That's because businesses are all modernizing and they all need tech skills to help them innovate. And if you're good at what you can do, you can bet that there is also another tech company out there that really needs your help. The thing is, UX design work is really unique compared to other fields. Take my girlfriend, for example. She works in risk management at one of Australia's largest banks. If she starts feeling stagnant, her options for branching out are so limited. It's very unlikely she will be able to have the opportunity to take her skills and apply it in the AI space or ed tech or health tech and all these different sectors. But for us UX designers, the sky's the limit. In your professional life, two of the most valuable assets that you have are first, high value leverage skills and a solid network. As the world becomes increasingly dependent on technology, tech companies gain more prominence, which means that the skills you learn and the connections you make in the tech space can truly alter your life's trajectory. Now take my own experience for example. Ever since I landed my job at freelancer.com back in 2008, many of the opportunities I've pursued later in life have come from the relationships I built 
and the people I met during my time there. For example, a friend of mine from Freelancer became the VP of product at another company and asked me to join his team to build out the product design department. That's how I got my very first $120,000 job. Another colleague from Freelancer asked me to consult for his business and I charged him $3,500 a day and I made bank that year because he knew I could deliver those results. And get this, later on, when I started my own agency, the CEO of the company I had helped build the product design team for engaged my design agency to strategize and design his new startup. It's amazing how the skills I've developed and the connections I've made have changed my entire life trajectory forever. Now, a big part of why my design agency succeeded was because I obviously do great work. Well, duh which means my clients get rich. But most importantly, the high value skills and the networks I build unlock the next chapter for me. My journey in the UX design world has truly opened up a world of opportunities for me. And these opportunities, I would say, are fairly unique to the UX design world. Now, I've had a blast partnering with companies like Adobe, who generously covered all the expenses to fly me to the US to attend Adobe Max. A huge thanks to Lindsay for making that happen. I even got to work with Microsoft on the launch of the Service Book Pro, appearing in an ad while I'm jumping around, doing muscle ups shirtless like a Shaolin monk. I've also had the chance to give back to the design community by sharing my expertise at design events, as well as mentoring designers at various institutions and online platforms. Freelancing has been an incredible part of my journey as well, teaching me the foundations of running a business and becoming independent in my professional career. As a designer and entrepreneur or designpreneur, I've built two profitable businesses, Mizco Media and Designership, which have generated around seven to $8 million to date. But it doesn't stop there. Beyond running my businesses, I also angel invest in early stage startups and advise tech companies on product design and growth strategies through various startup incubators. Now I have to say, none of this would have been possible without the insider knowledge, the practical skills, and the industry connections I've developed along the way as a UX designer, ultimately giving me the unfair advantage. But most importantly, I don't really see these types of opportunities available in any other industries. And just to keep in mind, this is important. I am still navigating my own path, but I know for a fact that Everything I've learned over the last decade and a half has positioned me in a way to be able to leverage the next wave of technological advancements much better than most people. I truly believe one of the biggest sectors of the future is the creator economy. More and more people will become creators, whether that means developing their own app launching an online store, establishing their own brand or offering a unique service. The idea is to work on your own terms, run your own small business and contribute value to the world in your own way. The barrier to entry for entrepreneurship has significantly decreased and will continue to drop over time thanks to tools like GPT and no code tools. So how does being a UX designer help you or I in the future creator economy? Well, remember, as a UX designer working in the tech industry, you're constantly acquiring high value tech skills and forging high value connections that will be vital in the future. So when the time comes to strike out on your own, start your own business, you'll be better positioned to succeed compared to someone who has no tech experience at all. This is what we call leverage. According to Insider Intelligence, one commonly cited figure sizes the creator economy at $104 billion in mid-2022. What about 2023? Food for thought. Now, in an early video, I discussed why I genuinely believe that UX design remains an excellent career choice, even as AI continues to advance. I don't want to rehash the same points. So if you're curious about why I'm confident that UX design is future-proof, make sure to check out this video. So that's it for this video, guys. And I truly hope it helps you understand why I genuinely love this industry. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Die Hard fans. And with that said, I'll see you in another video very soon. Ooh.